What's up, everyone? How's it going? Long time no see. Some of you who are in my course, we saw each other yesterday and every day, and we're now best friends. To everyone else, thank you for joining our webinar, our first webinar, February, using texture in design. I'm glad you're all here. Uh, I know nothing about like zodiac signs, but I do know that I'm a Scorpio, and usually people give me an ick after I tell them that. So I don't know what it means. It, it, yeah, sorry, I don't know. But apparently it's like how Slytherin of Zodiac signs and it's not a, it's not a good thing. So, oh, Louise is a Scorpio too, see? Yeah, Scorpios unite, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what it means, but uh, I'm glad you're here. And I'm really excited to talk about like snakes. <laughs> nah, Louise and I, we're bonded now. Scorpios for life. We're going to get like Letterman's jackets with like a scorpion on it. And we have like our number, whatever. Six, 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 I guess. I don't know. But uh, I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about using texture and design. Today is going to be fun. Um, Scorpio are a water sign. Okay, that doesn't make sense. It should be a desert sign. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna review our submissions for the January Creative Challenge. We are then gonna discuss using texture and design. We're gonna look at some good examples. You know how we do things. And then we're gonna uh, look at a few examples in the studio and look at ways that you can incorporate using texture um, in your experiences, whether you are a studio user or just an editor user or whatever. Um, if we have time, we're going to get into some Gemma and talk about producing textures with Gemma if we've got time. And then after that, uh, we're going to kick off our February creative challenge. Sound good to everybody? Um, all right. So let me actually pull up a different window. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then reshare my screen.
because I wanted to have a window sized perfectly for viewing our creative challenge submissions. And I know that some of you have audio going on, so let me turn that on. Okay, everyone see this? Sick. All right, so as you remember, the creative challenge for January was you were in the shoes of a social media manager at the popular music streaming service, Beam, who produce lossless, high quality, high res music streaming. Um, you've been running a successful campaign to get listeners to broaden their music taste by highlighting a different artist of the month each month. So you've been using editor and a template to create this awesome social media content um, that highlights the artist. And there were some requirements like the current month. That's a big one, right? The name of the artist, cover art of the artist or one of their albums, a short artist bio, and a list of their top five tracks on the second page with a couple of extra images to really show them what it's all about. Um, if you were to complete this challenge by today, you would earn yourself the parental advisory edible content community badge. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through, spend the next few minutes, look at some fun submissions before we get into um, texture and design. And first on the docket is Educate's very own Travis. I will say if anyone, uh, if anyone wants to pipe in and talk about their submission as we look at it, just let me know and I'll, I'll hand over the mic to you. Um, but if you want me to just ooh and on it with everyone else, also great too. So um, tra Travis, this is obviously YouTube. He loves YouTube. Travis, do you want to talk about yours? Or do you want me to talk about yours? I actually don't know how to give someone the rights to uh, talk. Oh, Travis, is in. there we go. Liana knows how to do it. Oh. All right, Travis, talk to us about your design. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bueller. Oh, hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I chose U2. I'm actually wearing my U2 Sphere shirt right now. I even had the Sphere background ready for this Zoom call, but it's all good. It's okay. I'm not sad. Just a little Ram. bit. Yeah, big U2 fan my whole life. Uh, that picture on the front there is probably their most recent uh, promo. Uh, obviously, they're a little, a little more aged there, but I still love them. Um, yeah, that font that I chose at the top, I think it's called Neon Sands. It's actually their current font for uh, the Sphere shows that they've been doing in Las Vegas. Um, and I actually went to see them in uh, October at the Sphere, and it was awesome. Um, so, yeah, lifelong YouTube fan. They're awesome. Um, actually, I ended up using the Remove Background tool on that image so that I could make it fill that color for the whole background. It was a little more textured, actually, before. Uh, but I would have had to do some really wonky cropping that wouldn't have looked very good. So to extend that color background to the top, I ended up just using the remove background tool in editor um, and then just extending the um, canvas color for the whole thing. Yeah, I like it. I like the removed background. It looks like it, you, there's like an actual backdrop. Behind. If you didn't tell me you removed the background, I don't think I would have noticed. Right, it's pretty. It's pretty good. A uh, pretty good tool we got there. They, they did a good job with little Bono's hair here. Right, All right. that's what I was know. most impressed with. Little little wisps of his hair are coming through. Yeah, and then on the next page, uh, I've got a couple photos of, of them over there. The big old big old Bono photo right there from his fly persona. Uh, this tour that they're doing, well, residency I should say, is actually um, based on their album Acton Baby when he he donned that that infamous fly look with the big old shades and. That's really when he started wearing glasses and he hasn't really taken them off since then. Um, <laughs> and then just beneath that, you've got a picture of them um, at Joshua Tree National Park, which I would love to visit one day, uh, where they obviously shot the promos for their iconic Joshua Tree album. Um, so, yeah. And then the other font that I've used here for like the January 2024 and then that copy um, is actually I forgot the name of the font now. I'd have to go and open up the, the file. But that's actually the font they used for the Joshua Tree um content on their album artwork and everything so yeah a little bit of a little bit old a little bit of new i like it i'm a little bit upset that you didn't add the uh what was the ipod video track song oh vertigo vertigo <laughs> yeah it was everywhere <laughs> a little upset you didn't put vertigo on their top five tracks but uh it's all right <laughs> that's all right i just went with what spotify said was their top five i personally disagree but you know it's fine yeah because vertigo is number one for you right no god no 
<laughs> well, it looks really good. Um, I love this so much. You did a way good job, Travis. Nice job utilizing editor and its image editing abilities. Um, super clean, super simple. Love it. You earned yourself the parental advisory badge. Oh, thank you. Looking forward to see everybody else's. Yeah, me too. So that moves us on to Adrian's. Uh, Adrian is amazing. <laughs> he did the sex bombs from Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Amazing. So much. Adrian, do you want to talk about yours? Or do you want me to talk about it? Uh, really not much to say. I, I only went into the studio to to change the fonts, I think. And that's pretty much it. Everything else was done in editor. But I love uh, this movie. This movie is just, you know, the the music is great. Like, the soundtracks are amazing. I think the, the like, the video game aspect of it is, is pretty awesome, too. Just matches all, of, like, the nerdiness inside me. Uh, and they just released uh, the the new animated series on Netflix, and it looks uh, incredible too. So check that out. <laughs> it does look incredible. I think I saw some like comparisons, like like panel by panel, frame for frame in the series, and it's like a direct replica of the uh, the comic, which is so cool. So I, I haven't watched it yet, but I really want to. But the music, wonderful, right? Was what's her name again? Oh, I forgot her name. <laughs> I can't remember her name either. It's been so long. But yeah, I, I love it so much. So Adrian, again, nice job. Went in the studio to update some uh, fonts. But outside of that, stayed an editor. Good choice of the red background. Ties in perfectly well with the drums, the guitar, the head, and the overall uh, tone of this entire image, right? Um, so way good job, Adrian. You also earned... The parental advisory badge. Congratulations. A round of applause for Adrian. Uh, Kim Pine. Thank you, Gene. Amazing. Okay, so we'll go down the list a little bit here. We're just going to go down the list and look at everyone's. Okay, Meg's. Meg's is so great. So <laughs> Meg picked Super Guitar Bros. Meg, if you would like to talk about yours, let us know. And we can give you the mic. Otherwise, I could ooh and ah at yours. So Super Guitar Bros is amazing. First of all, as you can tell by this beautiful like cover art, 80s action film, 80s like high fantasy like novel cover. <laughs> it's so beautiful. But what they do, as you can see, is Super Mario Bros is not, they're not actually, or Super Guitar Bros, sorry, is not actually, they're not actually brothers, they're bros. <laughs> Steve and Sam met back in 2007 at a local coffee shop where Sam was performing with a mutual friend of theirs. After seeing Sam's classical style, Steve knew they had to start making music together. During the first jam sesh, everything clicked. They begin playing, they've been playing together ever since. So they do like really cool, is it sometimes covers, but sometimes new, uh, tracks about really nerdy things like super mario bros zelda all of that really cool stuff but they're just so they're so good at it and it's just it's amazing so if you're into like pop culture stuff and video games and, and and things like that i would highly recommend checking out super guitar bros just shred in guitars riff salad over uh really nerdy stuff and the pictures that you've chosen here meg are Perfect. A live little live thing of them. This beautiful 80s style uh, couple's picture. I don't know what the plan was here like back in the day when they were doing these sort of things, but it was amazing. Cover some things like uh, from Stranger Things. It is. It's very much the Step Bros cover, uh, but it's Super Guitar Bros. They're like a parody band that covers, you know, really fun stuff. JC Penny portrait style. I'm pretty sure Pat on the educate team took his engagement photos in this exact style. And I want to show you, but I don't have any of them, but uh, they're hilarious. Him and his fiance took some photos and they're amazing. But uh, Super Guitar Bros, really cool, Meg. This is probably the perfect picture that you could uh, choose for their cover photo. Uh, I think as a social media manager at Bean, you're going to attract a lot of people into awesome guitar covers of uh, your classic video game hits. Is this a la carte from uh, Castlevania back here? 
I think it is. That's so sick. Okay, amazing. Meg, good job. You earned a badge. All right, let's go to Jean's. Jean, would you like to cover yours? Or would you like me to cover yours? Just raise your hand, anyone, if you want to cover yours. I'll go crazy then. I don't even know who Kirby is, but the way you have laid this out is so good. The left alignment here, right? This awesome logo, this font. Is, it, so is this Kirby's actual logo or is this a really cool font that you chose? Yeah, that's the logo, sick. Yeah, really cool. And the purple hue is amazing. Like I love the, the different shades of purple, both in the image itself, the background. Is this, it looks like this is the actual background of the image. I was gonna say, if you removed the background like Travis did and none of her hair was removed, that was impressive, but it looks like it's the background. But choosing the darker uh, shade of purple behind it looks amazing. The left alignment here, everything is, all the text is white and glowy. It really stands out. You did a really good job of this, Gene. Now here, this is really cool too. The way you've broken your alignment with the tracks um, and the alignment here with the logo. It's like it's sitting on top of it with Humpty Dumpty's legs dangling off. Don't fall. Um, but this is really good. I sing and I write to help people heal one note at a time. I love that very much. I've never heard of Kirby, but definitely going on my listen soon list. Uh, Self-proclaimed gra granddaughter of soul Kirby uh, calls herself a song therapist, not a song or singer or songwriter. This Memphis born and Mississippi raised talent wrote songs for big names, Rihanna and Beyonce, ooh, before taking a chance on herself. Seems like it's paying off. So, um, oh, you color correct the image. Okay, that's really cool. Sweet. Yeah. Um, it'd be interesting to see what the image looked like first. Probably something similar to the other ones. Uh, but color correct, yeah, something similar to this, but color correcting them to have this awesome, like monochromatic purple cover is really good. Very striking. I love that the white sticks out. So, yeah, really good usage of the, the image manipulation settings. So awesome. Gene, this is so cool. You earn a badge as well. Going down the list to Kristen's. Ooh, oh yeah. Kristen's is so good. Kristen went the extra mile and add some goodies here and there. So um artist to watch. I kind of like that more than artist of the month. I should have went with that. So um here I want to see Jeans. Oh yeah, that's the original photo of Jeans. Wow. Yeah, but you did a really good job with the color correction. Awesome. Nice. Uh, looks so good. Yeah. So uh, Kristen threw it up on its head a little bit, added some things here. We got a video uh, that we could watch. The filtering on this video is great. A link to the store and then over here you got a menu that takes you to the bio with the goats and the dog um ooh. this is what i love the most i didn't even think about this but this is a really good Kristen actually embedded a curated spotify spotify playlist um in her experience i didn't think about that i should have just made that a requirement because that's really really nifty the way anyone can kind of like come in here and listen to the tracks directly in the experience, right? So that's really, really cool. I didn't think about that. Should have done it with all of them, but uh, 10,000 innovative points to Kristen for this, but love it. The alignment here, the overall coloring and the styling um, matches, I feel like the, the vibe of the artist super well. All these images are grainy, look like they're taken from an, an old film camera, right? So like these colors are also like, mid 90s feeling as well every nothing's like really rounded everything's kind of blocky i think it looks really good so kristen i think you did an amazing job um capturing the overall feel of what the artist is Ooh, and vinyl right so goes perfectly along with it this is really cool good job here kristen amazing work you are in a badge love it nancy let's see what you've got Yeah, look at it. Big and center. Love it so much. Um, Nancy really took like the template and made everything much more exaggerated. 
to make it a little more catching here, right? Again, same with Travis's and Jean's. A simple background to really make the image pop here, but blew it up, blew up the uh, the text here to really grab the attention. Awesome job. And then here, it's our boy. Um, Grammy awarded top tracks. Okay. Amazing. American singer and songwriter. Um, his 1981 album, Breaking Away, spent two years in Billboard 200. And it's considered one of the finest examples of Los Angeles pop and R&B sound. I love the variety of music that we're getting here. Oh, Nancy, you want to talk about yours? Let's, let's hear it. Talk us through it. Okay. Um, suddenly, my uh, Zoom having issues. So, okay. So, I've been listening to him like forever. And I was pretty lucky. I got concert of him in Chicago and he was in in a big park. So everybody brought their uh you know lawn kind of chairs and it's kind of like picnic. Everybody bring something like you know picnic blanket that kind of stuff and his voice was incredible. And and I was just like I probably have my jaw on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was in the soundtrack of Moonlighting. And of course, I'm kind of worshipping Bruce Willis. <laughs> I'm the person who got tricked all the time on the, his uh, Lately the Sea movie. <laughs> and oh, yeah. um, if you click the Moonlighting there, it will take to uh, YouTube. Drinking oh, coffee oh. every day I didn't work for me. Oh. I couldn't figure out why. We can endure for one more second. I love this so much. turns slap in the face and he is a singer too so. i love that very much i can see exactly what you mean by like a perfect outdoor concert everyone's got their blankets the lawn chairs and just right yeah in, right and bruce willis is a singer too so i think that's covering this project because talking about the artist and you know yeah i so agree i'm having yeah. fun um just maybe a ding dong question so we cannot do animation at all on the this format right not like the studio yeah yeah yeah. as of now um editor doesn't allow you to change any of the animations or interactions or anything like that okay It'll probably to come in the future but for now that's all the heavy duty stuff in studio this is just for like the quick edits or people who don't know studio very well and just need to go in and change some stuff make templates that cool kind of I'm having fun. Thank you for uh, giving me and us a lot of fun project outside work that, you know, be serious all the time. That's the idea. <laughs> That's the idea, Nancy. Uh, Thank you, Len Nancy. Said, <laughs> of course. Len said, I remember being allowed to stay up late to watch Moonlight. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, this song, this song is giving me big Roger Moore era Bond, but ooh, that's yeah. Every Bond era was a good era. That's so funny. I love that. All right, let's move on. Heather, okay, so Heather was just going wild with the cat stuff, and I love it so much. But let's look at her experience, Heather. If you want to share yours, let me know. Otherwise. We'll go, but this is so good. Like, talk about the contrast, right? The color here is amazing. A excellent selection for an image, right? Grayscale. Heather's. Oh yeah, yeah. Heather's gone. She told us she was gone, so I'll cover hers. But Heather, wherever you're at, um, <laughs> yours is amazing. I love the font that you've used here. It fits in perfectly. But just like the amount of contrast. Right. If you close your eyes and you look at it again, your eyes are just like drawn here because it's so vibrant, contrasting everything else. Um, and then on her second page, 
continues like the color the theme throughout all of it i love it the way she's outlined these um japan i have never heard japan before but they sound they seem like oh we got a third page oh a bonus page from heather band member bios oh heather's band connection um my japan badge in the photo okay hey that is a big man. Okay. It's a big, um, amazing. So this band has some sentimental value to Heather, to Heather. I love that so much. Wait, Heather, is this Heather? If this is Heather, I'm going to go crazy. Is this Heather back, back in the uh, Japan days? I hope so. I think that's Heather. That is incredible. <laughs> I love it so much. Badges were big band merch in the eighties. Their big community merch too in the 2020s. Um, I had the good fortune of seeing the band play once. Um, that's awesome. I was more than hysterical. That's so sick. So clearly a band that uh, Heather is really passionate about, which I love. That's the whole point here, right? Just like to bring out the passion, um, be able to express your appreciation for your favorite artists. So this is super cool. Heather, wherever, wherever you are, Amazing work. And thanks for the cat pick. All right, moving on down. Len, would you like to share yours? I certainly hope so. Talk us through it. Okay, so uh, I went a bit of a dip um, moving away from the metalheads. So <laughs> this is as far away from that as you can get. <laughs> um, along the same kind of lines as what I did with the French uh, Call My Agent series. This is an artist. I actually learned something by doing this outside of stu outside of editor. I thought Lorena McKinnon was an Irish songwriter. She's Canadian. So <laughs> this was like for me a, a massive, massive um eye, eye opener. So what I like about her is she takes it, she's a, a very good storyteller and plays I don't know how many instruments, but absolutely amazing. Um and I discovered her when I was living in France like 30 years ago. And she hasn't done that much uh, in the last in the last 10 years, apart from release like 20 year anniversary vinyl sets of her biggest CDs. She's not that mega, mega, mega successful in terms of sales. Uh, something, something like something like 14 million albums worldwide. But, you know, um, this for me is my it's my favorite album, which is why I put the album cover on as my cover page rather than just just a plain picture of her. This is a book of secrets. And if we go on to the next page, you'll see that um, I've, my top five top tracks are all from this particular um, CD. Um, she plays the accordion. She plays the harp. She plays the violin. Um, she plays ev everything under the sun. Um, but the, the other great thing about her is that she takes, she'll take a piece from Shakespeare, from Tennyson, from God knows how many different poets and turn them into songs. There's one which is, an, uh, I think it's a traditional Irish story about the highwayman. The song is over 10 minutes, 10 minutes, sorry, because she's going through all the verses of this story. Whoa. And she's absolutely fantastic. So why I chose her was simply during the cold winter month when you, you can't go out anywhere, you want a good story, just listen to her music and get transported because it's not just Celtic. You've got Middle East, you've got Persia, you've got Mediterranean. And she just brings all these styles in together so nicely. Um, and all those links just take you onto YouTube to go and have a listen. Um, with lots of adverts, of course. <laughs> Amazing. I didn't think the Spotify thing either, so I'll remember that for another time. Well, way to sell it, because this is this sounds amazing. Definitely gotta check this out. This is so cool. Thanks for these links. Um, Beth was obsessed in high school. I mean, rightfully so. This sounds amazing. This is so good, Leonard. And the way you laid it out is amazing. Um, the cool artist pick. Yeah, and the other, the other interesting thing for me was because you said only use editor, I was thinking about everybody else in my team that doesn't have studio and they don't know what studio can do. So I was, as much as I was dying to go into studio to make it even better, I was going, no, no, no. Imagine I'm somebody from my team that's only got access as an editor for an editor account. And... It was it was it was it was a lot of fun as well because I was kind of thinking, well, what what can I do differently? Okay, I, I can use different color different colors 
to break up the text, the bio text. And then thinking, okay, if I was somebody else on my team, what else could I do? And just trying to um, just break it out a little bit so that somebody else on my team would be able to do that. So a lot of fun. Thanks for, I'm looking forward to more of these kind of tasks. Well, thanks for the awesome submission. Yeah, that's the whole, that was the whole idea, right? Like to only use editor for the most part and kind of put yourself in the shoes of someone who would use editor. So if you got like a teammate or someone like you're saying, who's not necessarily a designer or a studio pro or someone who's been through five guided design courses like Len, uh, <laughs> they can still yeah. make really cool stuff. The temptation was so strong. (laughs) Studio's sick, dude. Like, yeah, I I get the temptation, but good job, Glenn. This is way good. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. You get a badge. (laughs) So I'm going to share Liana's. There's a running joke in uh, the Educate team because we're we're big music fans, obviously. And uh, we always talk about Spotify and, you know, all that stuff. And then when the Spotify wrapped come out, we love Spotify rap, right? And we're always sharing each other's and making fun of each other and all that kind of stuff. Well, Liana apparently doesn't use Spotify. And instead, she only <laughs> listens to Sirius XM radio. And so she she says Team Apple Music, but she primarily listens to XM uh, series XM radio and so she never gets a Spotify rap and so instead of an artist of the month she did a serious XM channel of the month <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> Travis likes it too apparently so we gotta we're running short on time do you want to give us just a brief overview of how and why you did this yeah you pretty much summed it up I love Sirius XM, huge fan, have my top five channels there. I definitely could mix it up a little bit with my channel list, but we're working on it. And I thought these pictures were great. Like Adrian said, road trip vibe, turn mm-hmm. on Sirius XM, driving along the beach. It's not just And Gemma, radio. Gemma helps me write that. <laughs> Oh, hey, thanks, Gemma. It's not just radio. It's your ticket to a thrilling world of audio magic. I'm still not convinced, Gemma, but it's a good it's a good poll. Uh, unleash the power of music, sports, news, and talk shows anywhere, anytime. Well, you did a really good job. The color theme that you used throughout it. Yeah, very beachy, very road trippy, light, fun. When you're, you know, on a long road trip or a drive, the radio can be nice because it gives you a lot of variety, right? And you can kind of just listen. So, all right, passable. You get the badge too. All right, uh, we're running out of time. So we're gonna move through these a little quicker, but Louise, if you would like to share yours, let me know. Otherwise I will give an overview of it. Um, we pull, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is sweet. And it, it, very similar to um, Jean's or Travis's or anyone else who's used a very simple background. Um, really pulls a lot of attention into, I'm assuming this is a shirt underneath the jacket. I don't know. Or maybe a part of the jacket and this green jacket. Amazing, right? Sigrid, Sigrid, Sigrid. Um, and then more striking colors here with the yellow. Matches perfectly well with the yellow. Um, and I love these big quotes you've got here. The way you've laid this out, Louise, is really, really good. And it's awesome. Like the visual hierarchy that you've established, like clearly you're going to start here, come, but then this brings a lot of tension and then you go down into the rest of the the tracks here. Your alignment here. We've got ourselves a video. Already digging it. Yeah, that's awesome. Very catchy. I'm into it. I'm going to put this on the artist watch. Very aesthetic in the music videos and the images that you chose and also the way you've laid everything out here. Like, you've nailed it, Louise. Thank you so much. Um, 
Bree said you love she loves the quotes that you use here. Yeah, they're big, they're bold, matches this line that you've attached here. Looks so good. And someone pointed out, who was it? Uh someone, I don't know, in the chat said that uh Sigrid uses a lot of texture in the videos and images. That is so true. And I'm gonna now pull that when we get into the discussion. Um we're gonna keep moving through these dons. Said it was Cat Cat Stevens. Everyone loves Cat Stevens, right? Cat Stevens is so good. My dad used to listen to Cat Stevens all the time. That was our jam. My dad's a he was a truck driver, and and when I was a little boy, I'd have to go on the truck with him, and we would just jam to Cat Stevens. I love Cat Stevens. Yep, the best albums, right? The greatest hits. This is the one. This is the one we always jam to right here. This <laughs> this iconic. Cover art is amazing. Yep. Love it so much. Sticking with the cat theme, but not the same kind of cats. I think Cat Stevens is probably a lot more talented than Toaster is. But yeah, good use of the then and now pictures. I love it. The way you've laid out these pictures are great too, by the way. Um, so Don, wherever you are, amazing. Yep. Lynn, you saw Cat Stevens? Sick. That's so cool. Don, thank you. Amazing. I love Cat Stevens. Sentimental me. Kaylee Paramore. I don't know if you saw in the discussion, but we were talking about Paramore. Uh, I almost hit Haley Williams in my car downtown Salt Lake. She was just kind of randomly crossing the street. Haley got put on stage to sing Misery Business with them. That's insane. Haley, if you're here, I'm jealous. Ooh, hold up. Let's do this again. Watch the animation, the very subtle animation behind it kind of parallaxically zooms in. This is a really good cover art. Um, so is this, yeah, the layering is really good. So I'm assuming this is its own layer on top of the rest, but this was originally a part of the uh, the uh, the image. It looks like Kaylee's not here, but wherever she's at, she did a way good job. Um, yeah, the layering, super subtle, but really cool. The slight animation, super subtle, but really cool. Um, added a GIF here. I really wish that she would add pictures of her singing with Paramore. But everyone loves Paramore, right? No one doesn't like Paramore. Formed in 2004, they've been at it for a while. Um, amazing work. This is so cool. Super clean, super minimal. Love it. All right. Um, we got just a few more we're going to run through. Flogging Molly by Mac. Mac, do you want to talk through yours? Who doesn't love Flogging Molly? Right? There's not too much to say about it. Uh, I love the image that you chose here. Displays, yeah, such a classic, right? Uh, displays the entire band in all of their glory. A lot of, you know, pretty simple up here, and it kind of gets more complicated here, which is nice because it dr drags your uh, attention right to the, the lead singer. Um drunken lullabies amazing yeah really good shots a live concert shots and stills but really personifies who flogging molly is and what they're all about i love the font that you've chosen too it goes really well with the flogging molly uh logo salty dog might be my favorite song seven deadly sins yep gene says love the images the font choice here yeah you did great mac this is so cool Using the, the logo here, because it's such like an iconic Flogging Molly logo. Like, remember just seeing it on their banner when they'd come to town? Yup. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mac. You did good. Good job. You earned a badge. Meredith with Megan the Stallion. I don't know anything about Megan the Stallion, but I love this very much. Like, this is a very visually interesting uh, cover art. Yep. His, is that the name of the album? I love it. Yep. Awesome color choice here. The songs are amazing. <laughs> so very much personifies Megan the Stallion. Uh, gonna have to more like Megan the Icon. <laughs> I'll have to give it a listen. I've never listened to her before. So hashtag team Megan. I love it. Bring it a lot of your personality here. Uh Meredith, the awesome work. You were a badge too. This is so good. Okay, we are rapidly running out of time. So, Kelsey, I'm going to just go over yours quick. But, I mean, everyone knew Kelsey was going to be Taylor Swift. She might be the biggest Swiftie I've ever met. 
Uh, but I mean, I don't know anything about Taylor Swift either, but really cool cover art, right? The double exposure, pretty edgy. Got this cool little snake looking thing going on on her finger. And then the textured background that you've added here is amazing. Very, very hyper stylized. Um, yeah, it's so good. Uh, love it. The snake. So Kelsey, thank you so much. All right, everyone. We have spent more time on these than I wanted to, but I really wanted to look at everyone. So with the 15 minutes we have left, we are going to talk about uh, texture in design. I think we're still going to be fine for time, but if we run out, I'm sorry, I'm going to blaze through the end. Um, okay, so using texture in design means including design elements that provoke a sense of emotion, touch, or feeling. Right? Using texture in design breathes life into your design in ways that flat visuals just simply can't do. Right, um, So let's look at a few types of texture and how they can be incorporated into design. So the first one being natural texture. So using natural texture will add a fresh and organic feel to your visuals. Think of plant life, stone, water, sand, right? Any fur, anything that's real, real and organic. Um, adds this really cool organic feel to your visual. So here's a few examples, right? Pretty striking. Um, and feel free to like pipe up in the chat what sticks out to you about these as I kind of go through them. But this is a really good example of using natural texture. You see this Nora Natural Life one here, right? You can almost like feel the bristle of the leaf as if you were to like run your hand across it, right? Like natural texture should feel organic and real and it's kind of chaotic, right? the waves, right? You can almost smell the salt water here. Um, but they add a lot of contrast to the graphics over top, right? Each of these have a white graphic or logo over top. The, the natural texture adds a lot of contrast to that, which is kind of the idea there. If, if this were just a solid color or a flat image, um, it would still be really cool and striking, but there's just something about the natural texture used here like the, the veins and the leaves, right? It's just, it brings a lot of really cool organic stuff to this design. Yeah, juxtapose is the right word. Um, very much juxtaposed. A couple other ones, this one's super cool, right? Or like the marble here, like we know that intensely hard feeling of like a marble stone top or something like that adds, you can, you can just the, the chaotic pattern to this is really cool. It adds this natural organic look to something that is clearly hyper machined and hyper designed. So the contrast between these two is amazing, right? Same here, like, like this is so cool and visually interesting and it's completely organic, which is awesome. So, and they've kind of aligned their text along with this peak here, super cool. So that is organic or natural texture. A couple of really good examples of how to use it in your digital design to provoke that sense of organic life um, chaotic, juxtaposed with hyper-designed, it's, it's amazing. And as you can tell through these examples, it brings a lot of visual interest into the designs that they're in, right? So next we have tactile texture. Adding tactile texture will add depth to your design. So think of visuals that you can almost feel, right? So here's a couple of really good ones. Like imagine just sinking your hand into this moon dust and getting it between your fingernails. Like you can almost feel that um, as you can see, the the hard top layer breaking up with these <laughs> lemons smashing into them, right? You can almost feel that sand getting between your toes and getting stuck in your shoes and driving you insane. Um, but that is really tactile, right? You, you can feel that. Same with this. It's an image of um, some food and some fruit and some roots and stuff like that. But this huge grain over top almost makes it scratchy, right? Almost like sandpaper. Not quite like sandpaper, but like you can feel that amount of static, right? It's very tactile. Same here. All these have some tactile grain to them and you can almost feel the itchiness or the roughness that goes along with them. So that's tactile texture, right? Something that you can feel in your design. This is a really stark design, this one down here, because imagine if these were just this really light gray, it would look good, had a lot of contrast, black contrast to the light gray, but with this extra grain adds that texture to it that adds an extra element of, of uh, depth to the designs. So that's tactile texture. Um, 
I think my favorite form of texture to use because it just adds so much interest to it, right? And then that leads us to abstract texture, including abstract texture to your designs will increase their visual interest and contrast. Think of any sort of texture that is created by a designer. So artificial textures that was designed by someone, not, not from the world, uh, not from, you know, texture, but just like something that was created by someone. So here's some really good example, right? Like this really high contrast and almost liquid metal type of look, right? These, these awesome textured, like this watercolor almost, like this is abstract and it adds so much visual interest um, to each of these pieces. Adds a lot of depth, right? Like this one looks like it, there's a few layers of it, adds some depth. This one is almost like a 3D design, but you don't know if it's like 100% if it's 3D or not. Adds that depth, adds that kind of curiosity to the designs and that huge contrast from the bright, vibrant colors to the dark background, right? The dark font, the dark logo face here with this hyper vibrant, um, obscure, abstract, no rhyme or reason uh, texture behind. I feel like you could like dip your hand in there and just like it'd be on your fingers. You know, like those like classy dips when like people dip random stuff in there and they get like all cool color, kind of like that, right? Um, yeah, and same here, like it's almost like a, a water coloring or a painting, but it's clearly um, designed by someone. Adds that abstract curiosity to it. Um, so along with abstract designs, and I guess all of them, is a, a good way to utilize texture is to mask it. So no matter what type of texture you include, masking it with shapes or text or, or other visuals can add even more contrast to it, right? So these all have uh, the texture in the background. And it looks great, and there's literally nothing wrong with doing that. I do it. Everyone does it. It looks so good. But adding a little uh, masking to it can hyper um, focus on that contrast. So here's similar images. One of them uses the texture in the background and the other one masks it. Both look great, but this one um, serves a different purpose and really brings the vibrance of that texture out with it being masked. So that's what I mean. So you can mask it with shapes, images, text, all that kind of stuff, right? So here's a couple of really good examples. I love this ocean. Um, these waves and how like textured they are. You can smell the salt water, you know, you can taste it. You want to throw up when you get a bunch in your mouth, but the way that they've masked it here along with this image contrasted to the back of the UI in this almost bento box style um, adds this hard line in the container and really, really brings some contrast. Same here, right? Hyper vibrant uh, masked textures, galaxy, just some, crazy artificial stuff, some really fancy brain stuff. <laughs> I would still consider that like abstract, right? Because no one took that real picture. But you can see how it contrasts well with this big bold title and the white background. Um, same here, this awesome floral print um, masked in these archways, contrasted with a pattern background. So it's like, this is super simple line drawing, hand drawn, contrast with uh, hyper detailed, right? Looks really, really cool. So that's another great way to mask things. Um, here's a couple more, some organic rocks, gray sky, contrasted with the white with a mask. Same here, right, with the clouds. Love it so much. So masking is just a technique to really bring a lot of pop to uh, your designs. So here are two album arts um, that are very similar. We actually listened to this song at the beginning of the webinar. Um, very similar, right? Some sort of organic mouth roaring at you. This one is a simple graphic. And this one is a shark jaws masking a floral print. They both look good, tons of contrast, especially with the yellow text here. But this one adds different contrast, more organic contrast, right? Having it masked in these, these jaws, because you don't usually associate a floral print with jaws of a shark, a great, great white shark but it works really well because they're so opposite, so juxtaposed as Adrian said. Um, so two different ways of using contrast, but this is how masking um, texture can really bring that in. Okay, so we've got about six minutes left. And so I wanted to get really into um, some ways that we use texture in the studio or in editor or whatever, but we don't have a lot of time for that. So what I'm gonna do is just streamline this and show you one, example. Who remembers this? Anyone who was a part of the Certified Designers Club. 
the community before the community uh, remembers this little function that we created in the studio. This, our old educate platform and community platform was so rough and bare bones that we had to just plug a bunch of experiences in places to make it work. And so this was kind of like the main menu on the homepage of the old like beta community, right? And this is a Saros experience that we created um, in this bento box style that masks these uh, grainy texture images. So um, as you can see, it adds a lot of contrast to the text here, but it adds a lot of visual interest because it's like one giant uh, image that rotates with no matter what uh, thumbnail you hover on. And the way that we did that was actually just adding, um, let's see, five of these images. And then uh, I'm trying to pull it up, but it's not loading. Hold on one second. Here we go. So what we did here is, this is the landing test to see, right? This image and how it kind of like parallax rotates with every one that we go on. So we added the image like five times and, uh, oh, I just hit everything, huh? And then um, masked it in here, right? Here's the big image. You can see the image down here. We'd masked it for every single one of these and each of them has a different um, state. And so if I hover on this one, each of their different states rotate their individual images over into this direction. Same with here. So each of these have like five states or positioning and they're all, they all move in sync depending on which of these I hover on. So if I were to go to hotspot one, this gets kind of complex. So look at all these on hover <laughs> target states that we do um, dependent on each of these hovers. I go to hotspot two, as you can see, they all change. So they all have a bunch of different positioning, different states, and they all change in sync when we hover on the different hotspots that we've got included here. So we've masked texture in this bento box style, and then we've uh, used target states to move the image around. So the end result is something like this. So these are all different images moving in sync depending on where I'm hovering. Kind of cool, right? So add some depth to your design, but adds uh, organization with the bento box style. Um, they're pretty sweet. I had a few other examples, but we were so short on time that we're not gonna do them. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to kick off our February creative challenge, the bento and texture challenge. All right. Let's talk about this. So in the discussions community section, in the creative challenge section, you will see there is a brand new creative challenge for you to complete. The bento and texture creative challenge. Your challenge is to create a bento box style design similar to this um, about anything you want. Something real, something fake, an event, a product, a person or group, a game or movie, whatever. I don't care. However, you must creatively incorporate texture to increase your design's visual interest. You can organize and lay out the grid of your bento box however you see fit, but your design must at least include the following elements. A landing page with texture usage, a title or logo, a button or CTA that leads users to the bento box page, the second page, um, a page featuring a bento box style grid layout with at least five tiles. How many you got here? One, two, three, four, five, right? At least five. You can have as many as you want, but at least five. You can organize them, size them, space them, whatever you want, however you want, but you need five of them, at least. A header or icon for each tile grid, or grid tile, excuse me. Um, a hover or click state for each grid that reveals more information about the associated header or icon. So if I were using this one, and this was just for fun, you can see I have a hover state, but I would also need to include information about just for fun, right? That's kind of how that works. Um, you also need at least three usages of texture. Is that worded right? At least three usages? I don't know. At least three usages of texture, masking them in some, in some of your grid tiles might be a good idea. You don't have to. You can use them as background images. You can do whatever you want, but at least three usages of texture. That sounds so weird. Um, remember, texture breathes life into your design, so be judicious 
with your texture selection. Pick textures that portray your message in a way that only texture can, right? We looked at some really good examples. Um, unique applications, okay, at least three unique applications of texture. That is so much better. I wrote this at like 2 a.m. <laughs> so I apologize, at least three unique applications of texture. Uh, if you need some bento box inspiration, here's two really good resources, bentogrids.com, a, a curated list of really cool layouts for bento boxes and Godly Websites has a collection also of really cool bento box resources. Pick through those, get some inspiration, kind of see how you want to do it. Feel free to start from a blank canvas in the studio, or if you're uh, an editor user, as some of you are, you can use the Seros uh, welcome box template that we have in our community design section. Click here to import it into your account and edit it with editor. As you can see, this uses a bento box style grid, but keep in mind that there are only four here, but if you're smart, there's five here, right? So you can use this as a template if you want to get started. I don't think we really use any texture here, so you might need to. I guess you can kind of consider that texture, but not really. Um, but here's a template if you're an editor user or you want to just start from here. It's got the cover page, all the, all the stuff that you need. So again, keep in mind that it will definitely require some tweaking. You can't just go in and change text. That's cheating. Um, you'll have until March 7th to complete this challenge when we will hold our next creative challenge webinar, during which we'll celebrate everyone's submissions and hand out the bento and texture badge to those who complete the challenge. Good luck, have fun, take risks, earn the bento and texture badge in the community, um, put it next to your profile, that's that. Any questions? No, you can use editor or studio, use whichever you want. Um, I was gonna get into in, um, generating some cool textures with Gemma, I went through some fun stuff where I did some of that, but I don't have time because we are currently one minute over. So. Um, I would encourage you, I'll do this instead, I'll encourage you to at least try to create some textures in Gemma, um, kind of get a feel for how Gemma works, what it's capable of, and uh, being able to really hone in your prompts to get exactly what you want. I had some fun stuff planned. Maybe we'll do that next time. We'll, maybe we'll do a Gemma one next time. But there you go. So that's the creative challenge. It's posted. Go check it out. Go submit it. You have until March 7th. Uh, one last thing. Um, Sandra on the Seros marketing team. She runs our social media. She's gonna start doing community spotlights for active community members, the courses they've completed, the badges they've earned, all the cool experiences they've created. We're gonna kind of do this on a bi-weekly cadence. So she may reach out to you either in the DMs on Educate or just email you directly, um, just with some prompts and questions, you know, that kind of stuff. And she'll make a really cool social post, post it on there, she'll run you through it. But um, as she's going through that throughout the next few weeks, just be on the lookout for an email if she sends you one. Um, there's enough of you in here that <laughs> we've got a lot of community members that we can go through. So everyone will get one. It's just when, I'm not sure. So um, if you're interested in being featured in that, just reach out to us, to me, and I can put you on the hot list. If you're like, that'd be cool, but I'm not like dying to be on it, then Sandra will eventually reach out to you. But if it's something you're like, oh, that's sick, put me on. Um, reach out. We would love to put you on and um, um, get you on the the uh, community spotlight. Sorry, I just lost my train of thought as I'm reading through these messages super fast. Um, so the the January Creative Challenge, we're going to add all your badges right now for everyone who completed it. It's here in the previous challenge if you want to go and see them all, but everyone who completed it will get this badge in about five minutes. Um, and speaking of bento boxes, next four weeks, three weeks from now, Adrian on the Saros Educate team is going to be running a design trends for 2024 webinar in which he will explore five of the top design trends for 2024, one of which is bento boxes. So it would be kind of cool to complete your challenge. It's roughly around the same time or learn what he has to say during this webinar and apply his thoughts to your uh, February creative challenge before we submit them on March 7th. So that was a lot of information in a small amount of time. I'm sorry that I held everyone over, but looking at the submissions was worth it. So thank you so much. Excited to see all of your creative challenges for February. Be on the lookout for badges. Um, thanks for joining and I'll talk to you later.